All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, today's video, it's probably gonna be a pretty long one. So uh, grab some popcorn and make yourself a cup of tea or something. Uh, so today it's gonna be something a little bit different, a little bit of change of pace from what I'm really used to here. Um, I'm gonna be photographing landscapes, but as you can tell by the title of the video, it's gonna be actually covered bridges. So that's something a little bit different. Uh, something I've been really thinking about for a while now, just because you know, state of Ohio has plenty of covered bridges, and so this is like a project I've been really thinking for a while now about doing, and uh, something I've been really considering. So I'm finally thinking I'm going to sit down and uh, photograph a few of them, and in particular, I'm going to be doing my counties. Uh, I'm pretty much going to be doing a little bit of a field trip today, and just going around and photographing each one, just kind of down the list, and uh, see how many images I can take, and like I said, of course, uh, vlog and. I talk about you know the experience the processes the techniques i use to capture those on camera so it should be kind of should be pretty fun um the lighting today actually honestly is not that good it looks like it's just going to get really really sunny as the day goes on right now there's some low-hanging clouds and some fog uh, at least in the lower elevation parts of um, the area here uh but right now the you know the lighting's pretty good it's still like sunrise golden hour lighting uh, but you know the longer I wait the more it's just going to be this probably a little bit harsher blue sky day Or at least a little bit diffusing overcast um, It's kind of hard to tell um, especially with all the haze we've been having lately um, So I'm really not too sure but Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, so this first one I'm going to uh, is actually it's near Yellow Springs, Ohio There's two of them that I'm going to in Yellow Springs in particular, but this one's a little weird because um, What's I mean it's open to uh, traffic like vehicular traffic and actually below it crosses the little miami scenic trail uh, which is a bikeway that i'm very familiar with and uh so i think for this first one i'm gonna be doing something a little bit different i guess a little bit something a little more uh weirder i guess is um i'm actually be cycling to it um so it's about a couple miles i think of a bike ride uh but i'm gonna be lugging my camera gear and my tripod and uh hopefully that won't be too uh cumbersome at least but yeah so we're just gonna get started now and uh Hopefully you enjoyed the video, so here we go.
Whew. All right. uh, I made it to the Richard P. Eastman Hyde Road Covered Bridge. Um, it was constructed in 2014, so it's actually one of the newer covered bridges. It's not one of the older styled um, classic Ohio covered bridges that was, um, most of them have been, uh, very fortunately, have been restored to their original condition and they, uh, they look much more beautiful and colorful. This one, though, on the other hand, is um, it's much more modern kind of architecture and design. Um, I'm personally, I think it's a little bit overdone. Um, just it looks a little too ornate for my taste. But I mean, honestly, it's still a very beautiful looking bridge. And uh, it's got, yeah, just a really nice. It's a nice design, but I don't know. I just kind of think it's a little too overdone. But um, gosh, I'm tired. Uh, you know, cycling the big old bag behind me here. And really, I could have parked on the curb here on the roadside and photographed it all the same, but eh, whatever. I'm already here. The GoPro's attached to the, the bike helmet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the lighting is already getting very harsh, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It's not exactly the most favorable. Um, there's a lot of hot spots and um, what could potentially be blown out highlights just all over the entire bridge because um, it's sprinkling through the leaves over here and obviously the sun's over there so these lighting conditions aren't that favorable <laughs> you know a lot of a lot of really cloudy days and it's, it's like of course like the one day i decide to do this and it's gonna be a blue sky sunny day yeah all right let me as you can see i already walked through it once I'm trying to see what the best angle possibly could be uh, for photographing it. Man, this is hard. This is real hard. I've never done architecture quite like this, so. Man, this is gonna be a challenge. I don't know about this. It's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting at least. Um, yeah, I'll get back to you, but right now I'm just gonna kinda study it a little bit and see, see what I can really see and make possibly a photograph out of, but I'll get back to you on that. Man, I don't think I've ever seen this many cars passing through here. Is it, is it just because it's early Friday morning? I don't know, on a weekday, but very, very weird. Um, so I opted for, because I only have 24 millimeter uh, wide angle lens at the moment, anything wider than that I fortunately don't have and I really didn't realize how kind of cramped this whole entire space is over here um, so I moved from over here to the right side over here um, like I said I do have that sign that's kind of contending for uh, space at least in the the uh, kind of mid-ground I guess by this perspective over here but honestly the red and the lighting it all kind of the white and red I mean it matches the bridge itself so um, it's not too distracting and even then I may just clone it out honestly in post um on a, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> we will see but um this has been such a weird learning experience for me so far so here's where i got composed um one thing to consider with wide angle lenses is perspective distortion so it kind of makes it look like it's creeping down in a very odd angle i think but man it's just got a lot of spotty highlights so and then i gotta contend with the sky so um i'm clearly gonna bracket the shot two times maybe three different bracket shots i don't know but yeah, I'm really unsure about what I'm doing. It's, this is actually a lot harder than I thought. I've never really done necessarily an architectural type thing like this, but I mean, I'm treating it the same as it would any other landscape, honestly. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm just kind of looking through the viewfinder or the live view mode rather and seeing really what I can come up with. But um, yeah, this is, I kind of wish this wasn't open to traffic. That way cars wouldn't have to keep buzzing on by because um, it does get kind of, a little distracting and annoying but uh, the total length of this uh, covered bridge is actually 77 feet exactly so it's a pretty nice size um, it's not really that long and narrow as some of the other ones but I mean it gets the job done and you can kind of see almost where it ends over there but the trees kind of do obscure it. it's kind of hard to see but that's all right so yeah I'm guessing it was dedicated to Richard P Eastman um, I tried to look up some information about who that is I couldn't find anything exactly but it's a how through trusts 
bridge. So uh, most of the bridges I think today are uh, made from their truss bridges is what they call them. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to try a bracket now. And uh, first off, I'm gonna expose for the sky so I can get some nice blue color in there. Focus properly, I'm gonna do, there we go. Got a polarizer so I can kind of deepen and saturate those colors, but not too much where it creates a vignette. As you can see, it's a lot harsher, especially in that right-hand corner there. I'm going to keep it right about there. I'm about F14. Um, I feel like that's small enough of an aperture that it'll um, basically have a front-to-back uh, in-focus look to the image, obviously, because I want the entire bridge to be pretty much as sharp as I can get, um, at least for that small of an aperture. But I'm going to try out the first shot here. Okay. Exposed to the sky. It looks pretty good. The way my exposure meter is going right now, it's at the middle, and I'm at 60th of a second. Um, I'm keeping the aperture and ISO about the same, F14 and ISO 800. Um, I'm probably going to bump it up, maybe just like a little bit, like a third of a stop more. Not too sure, but let's go ahead and try that and see how that works. Take the shutter, and... Yeah, it worked out fairly well. I mean, all things considered. I feel like once I load these you know, images up on Aurora HDR at home, I think it's gonna be a lot better, you know, seeing the bracket shots. Right now, I'm really unsure just because of all the uneven lighting situations going on and the specular shadow details coming, sprinkling throughout the bridge, but yeah. Um, let me take a few more brackets, maybe one or two. And then we'll go from there. And I may even work some other angles. I'm not too sure yet. But um, honestly, we will just see. All right, here's my dilemma. So from this side, it's pretty nice. But then I got a lot of green foliage, you know, obscuring it pretty much. And But the lighting just looks a lot better. I mean, it's hitting kind of dramatic side lighting on that side. So I don't know what to do. And since it's backlit, it just looks a lot better on this side, at least from a lighting standpoint. But over here, I got these two signs, and they kind of obscure it. But maybe like an angle similar to this. I don't know. Um, I was even considering with the, the staircase where it came from over here and where the bikeway comes from. I was considering something along those lines, but um, even then, I don't know. There's a proper way to really get a nice uh, look at it. Cemetery Road Cover Bridge. Uh, looks like it was built in 1886 and is moved to its current lo location in 1975. And this 
the actual area it's around is much much quieter than the uh, Hyde Road cover bridge uh, it's just I mean you can hear the traffic on uh, called Grinnell Road just right beside it here but I mean other than that you know and there's no three traffic uh, this one's only open to pedestrians and it actually crosses I think it crosses right over part of the uh, Little Miami uh, so that's where it's situated above uh, but this bridge out of all of them is probably the I don't say ugliest but I mean it's probably in the most disrepair it's got it's just really really old um, you can just tell the structure just hasn't been restored clearly um, and the most apparent thing as you walk up to it and walk around it and in it is there's just a ton of different uh, graffiti and tag tagging uh, spray paint just all over it so it's really just a shame just to see um, it in this really kind of poor condition and to see it you know been mistreated really over time like this um, so yeah it's a little sad but what I will say is, since this one is probably one of the most remote ones I'll go to today, actually I think it is the most kind of remote one, um, since as you can tell it's really peaceful and quiet here right now. Um, that also means there's a lot of foliage and it's really overgrown as well. I'm um, just considering how off the beaten path, I mean it's not that far, but it's less than 100 feet from the, this little footpath over here. But still, it's just a lot of foliage and as I'm walking up towards it, um, I was just seeing you know, there's just it's obscured by so much green foliage this time of year. Um, really, the best time of year I'd say this, to photograph this one would probably be during uh, winter, winter time, really, uh, just because there'd be less foliage in the way. But you can see how it's just really, really hard to see it. Um, so I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking now, what I'm gonna do once again, I'm gonna walk in and out of it, walk around it. It's gonna be a little harder, I think, because the body of water is uh, around it at least, but. I'm gonna see really what I can do with it. I might be able to get down low over here, it looks like. But um, for now, I'm just gonna check out the inside and see what's up with this place. So, let's see if I can photograph it. Um, the lighting is getting much more harsher midday light, as you can tell, um, which is also very unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, I'm gonna make the most of it. I'm probably gonna just bracket all my shots the rest of the day, honestly. I feel like that's gonna be the best way to do all this and approach. Um, the rest of these covered bridges, at least the next four of them. So of course with all these covered bridges I did a little bit of research um, about each one, finding out as much info as I can. I'd say the best resource if you're interested in covered bridges in your area is uh, bridgehunter.com. Uh, that's where I found the most in-depth info about all these covered bridges that I found for my county here. Uh, so yeah, this one was built, like I said, in 1886 uh, by a man named Henry Hebel. And uh, this actually is located currently on its current property in 1975 um, on the Glen Helen Nature Preserve in Yale Springs, Ohio, which is pretty neat. And it's actually connected to all those trail, that entire trail system. And that's a big, beautiful nature preserve I've made videos about before, um, recorded a video and photo at previously. And that's a gorgeous place in its own right. But this is a lot more of a secluded portion of uh, Glen Helen here. And, uh, you know, that's where this bridge is situated, at least. And just like the first Hyde Road bridge that we, uh, cover bridge that we photographed today, uh, this is the exact same style and design. It's a how through trust bridge. And um, yeah, but it's a much more longer, more standard looking covered bridge, at least for Ohio. Um, a lot of them are red, typically painted red, just so they're very visible um, from afar. And um, it's just amazing to think that this probably at one point, uh, perhaps maybe in its original location, it was actually uh, available for traffic, you know, maybe even horseback or carriage. Um, maybe even cars at that point. I'm not too sure, but um, yeah We're just gonna photograph it simply how it is right now. Um, I really hope they restore this one though um, That would be very nice. I think All right, I am down lower I'm actually towards the water's edge as you can see in the little Miami River here and here's the bridge So it's a very basic design. It's just red uh, planks slabs. You can see one's a little bit torn who knows why, if that's just the natural elements or some foolish person. But anyways, um, squid. Say hi to squid over there. Um, something else over there. I can't tell what they put on here. So yeah, this one's going to be a little bit stranger. Um, just because of all the uh, uh, street art, for lack of a better term. But um, it's, very, it's a very long and br big bridge. Um, I feel like the, the height of it's a lot taller than any other covered bridge I've seen th so far. Um, in my experience. But... I don't think I can really get a wide enough angle here. And plus, like I said, there's obscuring foliage on both sides here. 
So let me see if I can back up a little bit further into the trail. Yeah, it just gets more obscured. All right. Uh, so it might have to be a dead on shot, like straight in the tunnel. Uh, okay. Some of this, these words and stuff are just hilarious. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can get farther back here. I think this angle might be the best. Um, once again, just like the Hyde Bridge, it's going to be a little bit uh, backlit since the sun is pretty high up in the sky now. It's all the way up there. Um, I feel like my first shot, I'm going to do back here. Mm, let me see. Get up here. Uh, and then you get the leaves falling. Isn't that nice? Nice little spectacle of early autumn. All right, I'm gonna try here to start, and then I'm gonna check out the other side, get down low in the water, or near the water at least, and see how that looks. Probably won't be anything good, honestly, and then I might just get another dead-on shot from the tunnel on the other side. And uh, yeah, this, like I said, this shot's gonna be a lot more, since it's not really a clean bridge, and the surrounding isn't so clean so to speak I mean clean uh, cleanliness as in not really so much dirty necessarily but just visually noisy and clean um, shoot. as there's a lot of elements there involved uh, but yeah, this one's gonna be a lot tougher I think I don't know I'm trying to really think of what to do ah eh, shoot let's go with it so um, I'm almost too far away now. Uh, see, I don't even need to be this far. Maybe just a few steps ahead. Oh, jeez. It's a trip over a vine. Um, yeah, right here. I'm thinking right here might be the sweet spot. Let's see. All right, prop it up. Yep, right here. And that didn't lock my tripod. Okay. Right here. There we go. And you got that. Beautiful little swag right there. But I think the thing I may try actually, same with the Hyde Bridge, I noticed is with the um, the pedestrian surveillance and use signs. I might try and at least attempt to clone those out. Um, I may do the same actually with the, the, the graffiti over here and see if that works just as well. So, but anyways, let's focus on getting the shot first here. Uh, so I'm almost straight on. I don't want to get, I really don't want to get too far off trail here. You know, uh, at least with the tripod legs. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to have to accept, I think, with the angle and the focal length I'm at. Because um, they do have the very overhanging right there, right? It's just blocking the top of the the bridge and the roof of it. So that's just going to be something I'm going to live with, honestly. Um, but here, like I said, it's backlit. So it, it illuminates, obviously, the inner part of the tunnel there on the other side uh so once again which i think is going to be the theme for today i'm going to have to bracket pretty much every shot i take just because it is going to be midday lighting which is not really what i'm favoring but you know it's just it is what it is and honestly the results may look pretty cool because a lot of architecture uh, modern ar architectural shots i've seen are done in high dynamic range uh with bracketed images so maybe it does go in line with what people do i don't know so we will see here but anyways I've been rambling enough, so I'm gonna shut up and take a shot. So, same, pretty much same settings as last time. I may stay consistent throughout, just that way these five images, set of images, all look really, you know, consistent really overall across the board. And at least try to keep the, the settings pretty similar. And like I said, probably bracket twice, maybe three times. So, check the histogram there. I'm at fourth of a second, F14 once again, ISO 800. And it's a very, very slight breeze. I may actually decrease the ISO just a hair and see what I can do with that. So, all right. We'll keep it going here. So I'm gonna expose for, <clears throat> I'm gonna expose for the bridge itself first so I can get some of that shadow detail, uh, kind of reclaim that in the frame just to start off with. Um, I don't want it to be too bright, obviously. I mean, even though I am bracketing, I still want some shadows 
and some darker spots in that tunnel um, at least obviously in that little rooftop up there and on the sides as well Let me make sure maybe I should make sure I'm composed first yeah it's pretty good all right I'm gonna focus a third of the way in the scene I'm gonna be kind of in the middle of the bridge itself and I think that's good two second timer take the shot all right let me check for focus pretty good all things considered all right as you can see on the image playback there's a lot of highlight alerts or um, blown out highlights blinkies whatever you want to call them um, in particular the sky detail throughout the whole entire frame but obviously like I said we're going to bracket I don't know why I took another shot there <laughs> um, so we are going to increase that shutter a lot more so it's going to be a tenth of a second i'm still focusing on the same spot the really shadowed area i'm kind of doing this actually left side not that it really matters because obviously i'm in control of the settings for focus and all that stuff but i'm actually focusing on that left side um, in particular but like i said it really doesn't matter as long as the distance is the same so i took the second shot and ooh, there is a little sunspot there which is unfortunate I may be able to clone out and post just because it's in the foliage so that may be easy to clone out uh, but let me, let me try to again and see if I can get a different result hopefully I can and yes I did so it looked pretty good all right I'm gonna take a few more shots here and then see what else I can come up with so one thing I've been really having to do it's kind of weird because it's been very overcast um, is that there's been a lot of little sunspots they come in the form of a blue dot um, after I take the shutter capture and review it um, uh, via the image playback and so what I've been doing is actually just cupping my hands just over so slightly but not you know enough to get into the obviously into the view of the frame there um, I've been having to do that to obscure some of that that sun it's like sunspots I don't know it's just weird but I'm trying this weird kind of more more interesting angle um, having it off center kind of like a little thirds here which I feel like it's been actually been working pretty well, and I kind of like that aspect. It's a little bit different from a covered bridge. I can't really recall a shot I've seen that uh, someone else has taken that really kind of resembles that. Plus, with all the obscured foliage, I just figured, hey, I'm going to actually uh, work with what I have here in the scene. And so, yeah, I think it's been paying dividends so far. Uh, but like I was saying, yeah, I've been having to cut my hand because the sun's coming in directionally from right here, as you can see. Cut my hand ever so slightly right after I press that shutter button and then just go like that and so yeah that way it wouldn't appear this little blue sunspot but anyways it's worked out pretty well um, I went over to the other side went drop down towards the little Miami over here once again and uh, didn't really find an angle that was really satisfactory um, you're just I think the thing is I really just need to step back literally and get as far as way as possible as I can like I am here and so that's pretty much what I've been doing I'm just bit off the trail here the trail continues on that way of course but the farther I get over this way um, it just gets way too obscured so I've just been sticking uh, right around where this lichen covered uh, tree branch has been and so yeah it's been working out pretty well I've been really enjoying the, the day so far and I hope the other cover bridges are more successful or you know get some great images from those as well